So Mark, did you see that Las Vegas has these new pizza ATM fast food machines from the cake boss, Buddy Velastro? He has his cake ATMs. Now you can get pizza in a vending machine and it looks absolutely delicious. No, I'm just kidding. It looks it looks the opposite of that. Terrible. Yeah, I mean, Caesars needs this because they can't uh, employ people or they don't want to hire people that actually staff <laughs> their restaurants. But it reminds me, I don't know, maybe this is a Midwest thing, like egg in a frame. You used to eat as a kid where you rip out the center of the bread and you drop the egg in there and cook it all. I think we but, called yeah. it something different. I'm trying to remember. Egg in a basket, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think I that's think. what it was. Yep, egg in a basket. Yeah, so that's what the cheese pizza looks like. It looks really weird. The pepperoni doesn't look too terrible but i've tried one of these type of machines by my house and it's very you know frozen pizza-esque not a lot of sauce not a lot of flavor you know middle of the night if that's all that you got because everything's closed i think it's perfect and that's the only reason i guess because of that link is the exact spot it should be yeah it's it's a good spot there it's sold out its first day so uh congratulations The big news of the week, the Venetian is going to undergo a $1 billion renovation. Uh, We know that Venetian just sold Las Vegas Sands, sold it uh, to Apollo last year, and uh, they're coming in and going to make a number of changes in investing north of $1 billion. And as they say, they're going to touch every corner, every area of the guest experience uh, as they renovate the rooms, the themes. But the good thing they said is that the Italian theming is going to stay. So it's going to remain a themed hotel. Thank God. Yeah, I haven't stayed at the Venetians in like 10, 12 years. And even back then, the rooms were pretty beat up and and a little warm. I was a little underwhelmed. I like the size of the room and, you know, having the steps down and all that. But it did seem... I was kind of shocked at how, you know, beat up the rooms were. So this has been a long time coming. It's kind of sad. They paid such a high amount of money to buy it. And then they got to put a billion into to fixing it up. But, you know, that kind of sucks. But I'm glad to see it and glad to see the theming saying, you know, we've been moving away from theming, which I think is the wrong type of thing. But, you know, it is what it is. They do mention that the theming is 90s Italy, right? And they say that, you know, theming has evolved since then. So expect the theme to change a bit as far as the decor and everything else to bring it more modern, but it'll still be, basically this is what they said, we are a themed hotel, we'll always be a themed hotel, that sets us apart, but the Italy of the 90s that the Venetian was modeled after has evolved. So you're gonna get a much, I guess, more modern take on it. Um, They said that they're gonna offer new food and beverage concepts, new entertainment, nightlife, bar offerings. The casino floor will look significantly different. So this is gonna be a top to bottom renovation. They just renovated the Venetian pool area. The Palazzo pool area is gonna get a renovation. Tau also been renovated recently. So basically top to bottom. They also said that in the last five years, they've been producing 70 to 110 shows per year in their theaters. They have four showrooms at the Venetian. We know MSG Sphere is coming, but they said that they wanna up that to between 700 to 1,000 shows a year. So it looks like they're going to get all of their showrooms up and running full steam ahead. I, I found that very weird. Like it almost like he misspoke. Like, how do you, <laughs> we're going to do 10 times. That's what we're going to do. 10 times the amount of show. That doesn't make any sense to me. How you go from, you know, <laughs> a few shows to uh, the most amount of shows. Yeah, it's crazy. I think back in the day when Venetian opened, they had all these showrooms going. So there was always shows. And then I don't know when they just decided where they were just not filling the showrooms and they just haven't done nearly as many things. So back in the day, it feels like they always had crazy amounts of shows in their small showrooms, their big showrooms. Even some of the smaller showrooms they would use for multiple different shows at a time. So uh, it's good to see that they're going back to that. I'm excited. I mean, a billion dollars, that's a lot of money. And it does seem like every part of this resort is going to be touched. And this is a world-class resort, one of the largest hotels in the world. And uh, I think it's one of my favorite hotels in Vegas. So with the rooms getting that refresh, they're going to be modern and redesigned. I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be great. And it could be a contender for best Vegas hotel. Yeah, they definitely, you know, they they compete with Wynn and everything like that. So hopefully the remodel brings it up to that level. You know, service is another big, big key to that. I don't know. It's exciting. I mean, every week it seems like we're talking about a new casino, a new tower, uh, and tons of investment, hundreds of millions of dollars. This is, I mean, every week we have news of new investment coming to Las Vegas. So uh, this is, uh, it's kind of exciting uh, between Fountain Blue opening, you have that new Tillman Fertitta Casino announced or not announced, but uh, for the South Strip, you have all this investment and resort putting up new towers, Station Casinos building new you know, big casinos off strip, uh, obviously uh, a ton more going on things like those smaller projects like dream Las Vegas on the South strip. So it's just, it just really surprises me how much investment we're seeing. 
Uh, but uh, it just means that Las Vegas will be more relevant, I guess, because you're going to have all these more modern 2022 takes on uh, on hotels, on hospitality, and on gaming. Yeah, and I heard that the Venetian is going to have like a small theater in the bar in the lobby that seats like 12 people, and Chris Angel is going to do like 600 shows there. So that makes up a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the 700. To all right, so <laughs> so this is actually a week where we can talk about uh, talk about Chris Angel news uh he was in the news uh all of a sudden like very rapid very suddenly he put on instagram that amastica his new show his new dragon show at uh planet hollywood was closing and it was going to go on tour i'm guessing that this has something to do with dragon dying and maybe his company owned the rights or something happened i saw on twitter that chris angel was apparently not even performing most nights in the show um so i don't know about that and what's even stranger is that Mind Freak is going to come back, the old show, at Planet Hollywood, and he's going to perform in that show. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Chris Angel's Amistika, I guess it fails. I don't know. It's going on tour, bringing back the old show. Joke away, Mark. Joke away. Tick- ticket sales. It was because of ticket sales. <laughs> has to be. But, no, it's, it's funny that he wasn't even there. Like, it was just a money grab. And, I, I, you know, in the announcement, it says, watch my TV special. So maybe he's been busy filming that. And that's why he hasn't been doing it. Now he has time to, you know, Mind Freak and all that. But I read some reviews on Mind Freak and it sounds like it was a pretty horrible show. So I don't know. <laughs> like they said, 10 minutes of tricks and 30 minutes of showing movies of him doing tricks in the past and him like berating plants in the, uh, you know, that they put like women, females in the audience. And it just was kind of a mess and him talking about his other show that they should go see. So I don't know. I think there'll still be plenty of Chris Angel jokes to come in the future. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring them in sporadically. <laughs> Maybe not every episode. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's funny that he's sticking around. Maybe Amistika will catch on on the road as a touring production. Like I said, there's no real news on why that's happening, why that's going to go on tour all of a sudden. It did say it was like a sudden change. So I'm guessing it has to do with Dragon uh, passing away. But I don't know that uh, for sure. But uh, if you're a big Chris Angel Mind Freak fan, then... Uh, then buy your ticket. You're you're one of five in the world, and uh, he needs Ooh, you to come out and uh, and support him. Did you see that rock paper scissors slot machine? You know, GTE happened this week. I didn't get to go because I had another work conflicting event. I had to fly to Miami uh, because of some stuff on our travel miles and points side, so I didn't get to go. But uh, there was a lot of you know a lot of those similar types of things. You know, electronic gaming stuff like that. But the new thing is these carnival games. And Rock, Paper, Scissors was debuted there. And uh, it's already at Circa. Are you, did you see the video of it? Yeah, I, uh, it, I mean, I don't, I don't get the, the point of, of it. it. Like, And then it's really weird. Like you bet $5, $10, $25. And then you could end up, even when you win, you could end up getting only $5. So why would you bet 10 or $25? i am i am guessing it plays a role in, you know, you get a better chance of getting a better payout and stuff. But he said in that, like, this doesn't even feel like gambling. Like you can't lose as he's down $45 in the video. So... Uh, I think I, I don't know what he's saying. He's, he, you know, he's nutty. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. But he and then he wins three times in a row. But yeah, like to your point, one time he bet five, he won five. Mark Meltzer uh, of Play USA, uh, he was at G2E. He says that it operates like a slot machine using a random number generator. Players simply select rock, paper, or scissors, and then they win or lose. You know, based so the computer is basically just matter. picking. One of the three, yeah. You pick. yeah. Yeah, it's just the it's, odds of, you know, you're going to eventually not pick the right ones and, and uh, you know, stuff like that. So it's a very simple game. You either you just pick one of them. If you hit it, then it spins the wheel and you win. But uh, I don't, I don't, it doesn't look what, great to me. That's what I hate about these new carnival games like the Claw game and in this game and, and even like the video game games where you play a little bit. Like it makes it feel like you have some role in it or like a skill could be involved especially with the claw game. And it's just another slot machine. Like it has nothing to do with skill or what you do. It's the same as like those, when you get the bonus and you pick the card and you're like, oh, I picked the one right next to the right one. It didn't matter what you picked. Like it's already predetermined. And I hate that, that it makes, you know, that gives people a false sense of security when they're, when they're playing these, I think. Yeah, I I agree. And I think just based on that video, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a very lucrative slot machine. It does seem like you would lose uh, pretty quickly, especially with those lower payouts on the wheel, because you're going to get that fairly often, you know, bet five, win five. So when even when you win, you know, there's a chance you're probably only going to get maybe one, two, three bets worth of money back. So we'll we'll see. But I'll, I'll go uh, film it when I get over to Circa. And uh, it's good to see Circa debut that claw machine, which was at G2E last year. So it seems like they're kind of getting that fast track on these new machines every year, which is kind of cool that they're debuting it at G2E and then you can see it on a casino floor. So 
I like that a, a lot. So we also got an update this week on Mirage and the transition to Hard Rock. Joe Lupo, who is the new president of Hard Rock Las Vegas, although they haven't obviously uh, closed the sale, he wrote a letter to Mirage employees, kind of letting them know what's happening, that they're working through the regulatory process, telling them to actually register for open enrollment for healthcare for both MGM and for Hard Rock. Um, they expect it, it seems like, to close by the end of the year, but just in case they don't, they want them to be enrolled in, in both programs. But he also confirms that we won't see the changeover in brand to Hard Rock until the Guitar Tower is built. So it'll operate as Mirage for several years going forward. They extended their contract with Heritage Steak and California Pizza Kitchen. Beatles Love has been extended through the end of 2023, which makes me think that's pretty much confirmation that it's going away after that or at some point, because why would you say that? I don't know. You know, why not extend it long term? Uh, but it looks like, uh, you know, it's a positive message. Seems like it'll be a nice transition for all the employees once it happens. Yeah, it's hard enough to find people in Vegas for work, so you don't want to, you know, push people out the door or whatever. And I'm sure if they have seniority with MGM, they might look to to move to other properties or whatever. But it's good that they would have the option to stay if they want, if they just love the property. I'm curious, do you think it'll be like they won't change over the name until the guitar tower is completed or until it start? Because it'll be kind of weird to have like a half a guitar there and it's still called mirage i don't know yeah i mean he mentions in the letter that it's not they're going to operate as mirage basically until they become fully the hard rock including the guitar tower so i don't know but i do know as part of the deal they do have the rights to the mirage name for a few years my guess is that they're going to slowly renovate the other tower as they build the guitar tower as they build new pools um, i've seen some you know other people comment this week that the dolphin habitat looks like it may be getting torn apart, certain parts of it. So I haven't seen that myself, so I'll have to go check that out. But uh, it does seem like maybe we're, we're going to start to see that transition. But I would guess that the Hard Rock name doesn't come until we get the Guitar Tower, that they do a grand reopening when the Guitar Tower opens, and that's like a whole big celebration to welcome in Hard Rock and that it stays Mirage until then because it's just going to be under massive amounts of construction. Just remember that the volcano is going, so the entire strip frontage with that Guitar Tower, I mean, that's going to be a construction site basically, um, so it's going to be kind of uh, iffy for a couple of years there, I think. Did you read the Atlantic article about Siegfried and Roy, Roy at all? I never went to one of their shows. You know, of course, I knew about them because they're in movies and stuff in the 90s. And just the level of fame they got to was kind of crazy. And you don't think of that as magicians anymore. And they kind of like kicked off along with, you know, Wynn building this mega resort. And he came to them and said, hey, I want you to, you know, headline it and stuff. And it was the first time they actually had a, a showcase or a, a stage built for them and with their specifics. They even had like a two-bedroom apartment above it or something. It was like, you know, all these crazy specifications. <laughs> and he did it all. So, you know, Steve Wynn, of course, has done some bad things. Um, but this was like one of the unique things and, and played such a big role in Vegas history. It made me really sad about Mirage, you know, because it was a little bit before my time. But just to hear that, talks about the accident that happened on stage and goes into more detail on that and just where they lived and how they had all these animals everywhere and just crazy. Yeah, they had a couple of uh, crazy big houses here in Las Vegas, one closer to the Strip, I would say. And then they had one way out in the Northwest that was sort of their sanctuary that they lived in their later years but they really love those animals and they worked their way up they're a success story for vegas i think they started downtown and then i think they spent many years at like the frontier if i remember right um and yeah like when had that vision to bring that sort of integrated resort concept those mega resorts and to build that theater and to to make them special and they were the top of the town for so many years like i don't know if people remember that but they were the number one show in town. They were the show to see that everybody wanted to see. And that place was the place to go too back in the day. So, you know, it gets lost in time because so many other resorts came after it, but the Mirage really was this special place. It still is. And I think with the transition to Hard Rock, it will be again, based on having seen so many of their properties around the country, like in Tampa, in Atlantic City, stuff like that. It's going to be special again. I'm excited for it. And uh, it's so many, so much cool history there. It is going to be sad to say goodbye to the Mirage and that whole era uh, of, of Las Vegas. But let us know what you guys think about any of the stuff we talked about. Leave a comment. We'll discuss it down there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're just a few <laughs> subscribers short of 30K right now. I think like 10 or 15. So hopefully by... The time this comes out, we'll be there or we'll be there shortly. So thank you to everybody who subscribes 30K. Really appreciate that. 
Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you see all of our videos. Tell a friend and uh, head to mtmvegas.com for all of our Vegas content. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. See you on Friday.